I'm Rick Anderson, president of Coaches Club Cannons, and we are the makers and sellers of black powder cannons. It's a new, uh, for a younger generation, a new exciting hobby, and uh, more and more people are, are getting involved in this, and we're going to do some videos on some of our different products for those of you that really aren't familiar with this. The one I'm going to show you today is really uh, one of the most fun, dramatic black powder cannons. I've uh, found this and ended up developing it and so forth about three years ago. It is the bowling ball mortar. And again, if you haven't seen this, indeed, what this is, is <clears throat> this cannon is going to shoot that bowling ball. And because at the higher angle, we call it a mortar. Uh, and the, the, the fun of this is kind of, all our great uh, cannons are tremendous fun. But this, and we're going to invite you to go on to the website and make sure you see this being fired several times. This is a tremendously entertaining uh, event. It's very good at picnics. It's a very much of a family event. And all you need to do is follow uh, basic safety rules and this will be a tremendous uh, <clears throat> uh, fun thing for you to own. So again, at the Coaches Club Cannons, we're going to make sure you get the service and uh, uh, knowledge and anything you need. It's very important for us. Uh, all you got to do is look on our website anytime, www coaches club cannons and we love talking to our customers so feel free to call us 385-312-0811 so let's get to our bowling ball mortar that's what we're going to feature today and i just wanted to give you uh, uh <clears throat> some information that all of our products including this one are professionally made these are not individuals and garages and so forth. They're CAD drawn, they're CNC cut, and we've done the real research, the ballistics, the pressures, the balance points. So a tremendous amount of work has gone in to making these a perfect product. They fire tremendously well, they're very safe and dependable. And again, we really discourage folks because uh, several folks do try and build them, but I would discourage it. If you do decide to build one, feel free to give us a call and give me an opportunity to talk you out of that. But I can give you some information also. So, in a bone ball mortar, we've got a couple of components we'll go over. This is the barrel. It's actually an expansion chamber. I won't go into all of that. This, this part is the barrel. Back here is the breech. That's where... Uh, <coughs> the explosion takes place that's where the powder goes off and inside there and you'll get a look at that later is a two by two inch powder chamber it's a hole that you put the powder in and in this particular case to make you feel secure that is a piece of four inch by six inch solid 1018 rod this cylinder has been carefully uh, cut to be perfect and then the breech is pressed in here and triple welded by our certified welders to make sure everything is perfect. On the back of the breech is what's called trunnions. You can see these, the end here. It's what holds the barrel uh, to the carriage. All of this is the carriage. That's what holds the cannon. And in our case, uh, and again for many of you, uh, you'll understand that a lot of these are wood but they tend to crumble. We made our carriage out of two inch by three inch, 120 thick walled tubing, uh, fully welded, so that it's virtually impossible to, to damage. That's all of our things are overbuilt, so that if you make mistakes, you're not gonna pay for them. You know, you won't get hurt or anything else. So, uh, very simply then, the other component we may have, uh, here's the trunnion, but we also have a cap that goes over it to hold it. All right, and with this simple little half-inch wrench, there's four bolts on the two trunnion caps. And what we do is get them set, and all you have to do is tighten them down, and that'll secure the barrel. If you want to change angles, 
if you want to change an angle, you can just loosen that a little bit and then change the angle. But again, if uh, <coughs> you go to our website, you'll be able to see uh, full specs on this, you know, what we're making it out of and other design things. What we want you to do is feel very secure that when you buy a Coach's Club Canon, it is safe, it's going to work, and you are going to love it. Uh, <coughs> in fact, now why don't we go a little bit to see how we operate this thing. Okay, you know we got our our barrel and our breech and our trunnions and trunnion holders and caps in this carriage. Well, how do I shoot this? Now, with all black powder cannons, really, it comes down to um, understanding basics. But to keep from getting, to, you put the fuse in and get fuse anywhere. You put your powder in. And there is the powder chamber. For this cannon to fill the powder chamber, it's about three and a half ounces of black powder. You can use any kind of container, as long as there's, it doesn't hold static charges, glass, aluminum, brass. We use this special treated plastic, and we pre-measure. This is cannon grade black powder. And once again, if you go on our website, we can also give you some places to get this if it's not available. Uh, <clears throat> black powder is graded by how finely it is ground, and uh, cannon powder is the roughest, but you can use others. So once we have put our, uh, this is a good feature here by being able to tight, tighten this down. There's the powder chamber there. So we'll do, we'll do a little more about, we have put in our powder. You do not have to tamp it. It just fits right into that powder chamber. I'm going to tell you to do this. This is all cannons, guns, and everything else. When I put this in, you really want to, no matter what, just keep in the habit of never putting your head over the barrel, for, for the most part. Um, <clears throat> so if I put it in, I'm going to stand to the side. Let that come on down. Now, once it's in there, I can take a peek, make sure everything's there. But we just want to keep in the habit of not doing that. Uh, once we have our fuse in, put our powder in, and this is very important. What we want to do is take our ball, use the finger holes, and we want to set the ball down in there. You don't drop it, you just set it right on top and you're loaded and ready to shoot. And then all you have to do then, and this is just a little tip I'm going to add on here, to light the fuse, oh, then we set it at the angle we want. Whatever that is, you can set it at any angle from 45 to 90. You may want to get one of these little torches to light your fuse because of wind. That's a little tip. So, and I'll try and throw some tips in here as we go. Uh, <coughs> So shooting it was basically that simple. Uh, put the fuse in, put the powder in, put the ball, aim the cannon, and light the fuse. Now, <clears throat> you know, for a lot of guys who are big into guns, they want it to be more complicated but, than that. But that, um, that's really it. <laughs> so what we want to do is go over a little bit the performance of these, all right? Now, because of the way we've designed the powder chamber, the way we have machined that, it has a concave uh, bottom along with the, the powder chamber part. That ball sits on there extremely uh, with a tight seal. And so that small amount of powder, this is really three and a half ounces, can take and shoot and these have been laser measured. If you shoot it at 45 degrees, that's the maximum distance angle. And maybe go to an FG, uh, you know, a little finer powder. We have been able to shoot that ball a mile. Now, most people don't do that because you do need to chase them down. But if at 45 degrees, now if you want to, once you understand this, you can drop this ball 100 or 200 yards away from you. The average, most people shooting at 70 degrees, they shoot it out four, five, six hundred yards. But by controlling the angle, see the higher you go in the angle, 
the less distance you're going to get. It's just going to go higher. So to keep that ball at 300 yards, I usually shoot it about 75 degrees or 70. This you can get anywhere. This is another little doodad. Uh, just a, one of these little angle protractors that are cheaper, like at Home Depot. I like having that around so I can just change, check the angle I'm going to shoot at. Now, if I want to drop that ball a short distance away, I check the angle, and there's nothing says you have to use uh, the full three and a half ounces of powder. So you put two ounces in or what uh, some lesser load and that ball will not go as far and so you're controlling it. Most people when they end up shooting quite a bit they end up shooting at about 70 degrees it doesn't go so far they can see the ball it's still going way high and it's retrievable a little easier out at four or five or six hundred yards. But the big point is, is whatever, however you adjust it, it'll do, um, uh, you're in control of it by the amount of powder and the angle you shoot it. Now I'm going to do this very quickly. <clears throat> if, and I have some gentlemen, and I'm just, if you even plan on doing this, call me. Because the way that our, uh, carriage is designed, you can actually shoot from this angle. It becomes virtually a, a direct line of fire. And we don't recommend that uh, just because you're starting to deal with some recoil forces. You need a couple tips on just It works really good this way, okay? Just fine. But you crazy people, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I need to talk to you about this also. Uh, <clears throat> So again, the performance, now we have had this uh, actually of a, a large chronograph. That actually has been, the ball has been chronographed at 750 feet per second. So that's one reason we can get so much distance and uh, power with this. Uh, if you're into, you know, trying to hit targets and um, now this is not to be sold as a destructive device, but a bowling ball traveling at 350 miles an hour in the first second, you know, could be fun hitting a piece of plywood or something, or whatever your imagination is. Uh, in regard to that, in the performance, uh, we do need to do a little bit on safety protocol. Once again, going on the website, you'll see uh, full protocols and safety, full list, very complete. What I want to do is the most basic, this is how you shoot this safely, all right? And really, uh, there's, it's really hard to uh, make a mistake with this because we're using a uh, fuse and like any gun or anything of common sense, you know, stay away from the front of the barrel, all right? Uh, also with the safety in mind, uh, <clears throat> make sure that uh, you don't get not just static but you don't put your powder in and bang around in there with a metal tool or something that would create a spark you don't do that if you're going to put something in there wood uh, a dowel or something and just make sure it's not metal brass does not hold static uh, so let's make sure that the other safety hint and this is from a customer the other thing with black powder is that once it shoots in the powder chamber, you can have some embers that are still floating around in there. So this was a customer, this is just one of those electronic dusters. And I use this with my smaller cannons also. You know, after you shoot, and maybe you're not gonna clean it completely, that little thing goes right down in there. You can hear that, that blows out extra powder and make sure that any embers are out. So always err on the side of caution, but <clears throat> if you make sure there's no ember in there and you don't create sparks and, and static, this thing is going to shoot safely forever. Now, in the normal safety packages, you should always do eyes and ears. You should have your hearing protection and eye protection. It is no, good to note this does not sound like a gun. It's not a crack. It's not supersonic. It's a thump. 
That's what makes it so much fun. It's like a mini earthquake. It's a boom. At the same time, when you look at our videos, you'll hear this gong. That's the, the ball uh, hitting the side as it comes out. And then the ball is buzzing and it's just a tremendous fun thing. It's fun to watch people watch a, a bowling ball disappear into low clouds and then come back out. So safety again, please. Uh, it's very basic common sense things. If you get one of these, which we hope you do, you make sure you go through the full safety packet and you can always call us and just use the most common sense uh, things and it'll, you'll never have a problem with that. So I can add some other little tips because the thing with black powder cannons is it's not like a gun, you know, you take a gun and you shoot at something, you know exactly what the bullet's going to do against something, you know, a plate. But black powder cannons, and like this, it's, <clears throat> it's what you shoot. With our rules, including this, if it fits, it shoots. And the other thing that you don't know is what do you shoot at? Now this is, does the bowling ball. Now this, a lot of this is from my crazy friends who have fun. I'm going to start with this one, which I did two years ago. I'm due again. Uh, I shot Thanksgiving dinner out of this. I packed it up. I put in a 10 pound bag of potatoes. Flump. They flew out. I wanted to see if they got mashed or fried. Then I wanted to work on dessert. I've got a pumpkin that I get at the grocery store. Uh, you get, you'll end up with a tape measure making sure they fit in here. Put the pumpkin in. Fluff. That went out 20, 30 yards and about 500 pieces. Now I'm in the desert, so squirrels and gophers and crap, they eat that so you don't have to police it up. And then by chance in the, uh, a grocery store, I found that a 12 pound, a 12 pound frozen butterball turkey fit in there perfect. So uh, that still wasn't the last shot. We stuffed that bird, he was starting to thaw a little. And I, I kind of, I was going to use a full charge, and I would the next time I do this, but that, that bird came up with one of the little wings flapping, and it went out there about 50 or 60 yards. We were just laughing. Now, the good part about that, you didn't throw the meat away. You know, we f flash killed all the bacteria on the skin. I just picked it up, washed it off, and we ate it. We put it in the oven. It was probably even a little more tender. And then one of the other little tricks that is fun this is a little small balloon. You actually make a water balloon. Now you be careful with this, you know, because a bigger water balloon, that can be a gallon is like seven pounds, something like that. So if you put a water balloon over your powder chamber carefully, you get tremendous comp compression. Now I've shot that, uh, you get two results. If you're using full load and a big bag, you create your own weather system. It goes up and you have this, cloud of mist full of black powder <laughs> and people running and it's hysterical to watch that and I found out that if you do that at the end it also cleaned out the barrel. So we shot that, laughed, I went in there and and oh my god all the powder and stuff had been kind of blown loose and we just wiped it out. So other things I mean with like water balloons, you got guys who've frozen. I took a water balloon and froze it and a couple guys have figured out how to put ice chunks in there, and that's amazing to watch that. It turns into some kind of Disney fantasy land of sparkly things. Um, <clears throat> there's other things, because uh, one of the most important things is that you keep your imagination going. So, and if you kind of remember, oh my goodness, there's, see, there's a list of people who shoot stuff that you know, you make sure it's legal and safe and so forth. Oh, the, a big one uh, that people do all that want. Now, I haven't completely figured it out, but I know you would. Is the In Utah, it's the candy cannon. They get groups of kids and church groups and whatever, and they have smaller cannons. I've had them want me to make them for them, and they fill them full of candy and then shoot it, and the kids go and chase down all the candy. They have a tremendous time. Uh, the ones they use are smaller ones. I've talked to them. I say, there's the ultimate candy cannon. You can easily put 40 pounds of candy in there. You know, that's a lot of candy. You just got to figure out how not to burn it <laughs> and find something uh, 
to wad the back, which is not that big a deal. You just have to spend a little time doing that. So I wanted to thank you so much. Uh, I hope I gave you a little more information on this. We get a lot of questions on the bowling ball mortars, and I hope I answered uh, a bunch of those, how they're made, what the performance is. And we love, uh, you just go on that www Coaches Club Cannon site. And again, it's full of spikes, uh, specs, and plenty of uh, photos of this shooting, uh, of people doing that. And again, please call us at Coaches Club Cannons and look at our full line of cannons. We sh shoot golf balls, billiard balls, cans, and these. And you call anytime, 385 312 0811. And Let's just let's just let it go and have some fun out there because that's what this is about.